Well, Mr. Shagun Shawumi is still with us in the studio, and you can hear different viewpoints there, uh, you know, from with APC government responding, uh, then PDP governor also speaking there, and also an analyst, you know, sharing their viewpoints on how they view the president's absence. All of these different schools of thought. Where do, would you say you you must tilt. Obviously, with the analyst. You see, the painful part is that Nigeria is not, we don't have a, a, a limited number of resources. I don't know what we have done that the worst of us end up being in charge of us. The president can be ill, we agree. It's the communication style. It's the, you see, you can't keep, you can't decide that if tomorrow morning another president becomes ill. What is the established, accepted way of communicating same? That's what I meant by learning. Mm. Every, when, a procedure, when a procedure comes on the table, mm. it is to the president's credit that he transmitted power. Nobody can take that away from him. But having transmitted power, that is the more reason why people will be wondering and be interested and wanting information. But that said, there's also a moral high ground that any person who has built integrity of actions, thoughts, and maybe frugal lifestyle must engage in. And that is one. There's no point in concealing things that people want to know about. Even mere small movie stars and celebrities can't even hide from simple things. Number two, you are almost for the period that you are in charge of public space, the asset and the property of the people that have put you there. And so when they desire to know, they should be given information. Number three, there has to be a renewed dialogue between making sure that government and the government understand themselves. The lacuna that we are seeing here is because the handlers of this presidency, especially the information management apparatus of this presidency, they have just been, with due respect to them, absolutely inept. What do I mean? Mm. Now, before I let you go into what you mean, there are two major issues which are coming out. You're talking about the issue of communication. You're also talking about the issue of protocols. Yes. You're saying that first, of, first and foremost, the president ought to have been able to communicate to Nigerians. Uh, some people will say that wouldn't that mean that we're dealing with two presidents? Because first and foremost, they believe that the acting president, his words should be sufficient because he is exercising the powers of the president and that a president speaking from abroad, will be, there will be questions as to in what capacity is he addressing Nigerians? That's on the one hand. On the other hand, there are questions as to how, uh, you know, if he communicated, for instance, how would that douse or how would that remove the fact that some people are saying, Mr. President, you've been away for too long. Come and resume or resign. You see, the, 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 the beautiful thing about narratives, public narratives, is that we can spin it in whatever direction we want and we can justify the unjustifiable there is a moral high ground, a middle cause that says, how do we ensure that we are getting growth? Let me tell you, had the acting president, now my, 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 my the doctor, Dr. Shibadu, SAN, professor, had he been able to carry on himself sufficiency of the goodwill of Mr. President, then why are we even interested in him? It can be there, and the but you can obviously tell that you, a monk does not, the, the, the rope does not make the monk. You can call yourself, they can write a letter and call you whatever you like. The people of Nigeria know who their president is. And it is even to Buhari's credit that notwithstanding how ill he is, Nigerians still believe that's where the authority is. That's their commander-in-chief. That's the last vestige of the authority in this country. That's the man that they gave responsibility. That's the man they trust. You are not going to be comparing it with some other human being. The, 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 the volcanic followership that created the momentum is what is making people agitate so and issue, when they agitate on a second issue of protocol yes and um, who do you think should be developing this protocol because the national assembly believes that you know the president has complied with the law and they, they see no room for any agitations i'll I, I, I try to look for a foreign example so that you can get the point i mean mm -hmm. the, the laws of any land will not cover precisely whether you can how you're supposed to shake the Queen of England. For instance, in their protocol, it is not expected that you are going to put your hand forward to shake the Queen, unless she stretches. You are not even supposed to touch her. You know, there's, there's a doc, there's supposed to be some backroom office 
where they worry about all these things. If, what is the procedure if the president wants to get, his child wants to get married? What is the procedure? We we'll develop all of this and have it so that at any point in time, if something comes up, we have an engagement strategy in place. Okay, rule number one, put information out. Rule number two, keep them, keep them hopeful with good information. Rule number three, explain to them that progress is made at day 30. Let the president make a phone call to somebody that they can hear his voice at day 40. Tell them how, how well he's recovered. These are the protocols we're talking about. Mm -hmm. They cannot be covered by the Constitution. A nation as complex and as large of Niger as Nigeria will require some unwritten things that will, give, that will begin to form our own character or how we are and how we ought to be or this is how we do our things. And it is from, the, I think, that the civil servants now are supposed to be the ones to be, that could be of uh, private sector people that can be empaneled to help them look at some of these protocols. Gimba has a question for you. Yes. Lagos. Hello, Gimba. Thank you, Mr. Cholmi. Uh, I'm really concerned, though, because uh, you did make reference to uh, a cabal on the one hand and then saying that if the president has the capacity to receive Team A, receive Team B, and even have pictures, sessions with them, uh, does it then suggest to you that uh, uh, there is a cabal, and I don't understand what you're trying to say, is the cabal keeping the president away from Nigerians? Gimba let, me, Gimba, let me tell you what it means. If the president is, is, if the president is well enough to receive the aggression of Canterbury, is well enough to receive the vice president, is well enough to receive Oyego and Co., is well enough to receive the medley of governors that went on, the, on tourism to go and visit the Queen, is, that means that the, word, the president is well enough to speak to Nigerians. Because I'm sure he couldn't have been sitting in that meeting, Mom. And if the president were to speak, we don't see the president every day even when he's in Nigeria. He's busy doing his work in Nassau, but he speaks to us. Maybe we see him shake, we see him say something, we see him, we hear his voice. And because they had started on a very bad footing anyway, that's the more reason why the, hearing the president makes more sense. What is going to go wrong if the president thanks Nigeria for the support and the prayers and all that, and they heard his voice? Yeah. We're not going to, we may wish all we want. We're not going to do something that is unconstitutional to get him made. We can't stop him from completing his time somewhat. That is domiciled in the assembly. But what we're saying is that Nigerians are excited about this matter. Nigerians are agitating about this matter. The president needs to, the system needs to be a bit more, you know, respect, irrespective of their views. Do you think that uh, uh, the absence of the president has derailed governance in any way whatsoever? It has not, to be fair, it has not derailed governance. What it has done is that it has made the entire Nigerian nation nervous. And why are we nervous? I'll count some of the things that is making us nervous, even though you have an acting president. You have an acting president. Kanu is running riots in the southeast. You have an acting president. Some people are giving people ultimatum in the north. You have an acting president. Some uh, you write, people are coming up with all sorts of funny cliches about uh, another republic. You have an acting president. People have gone into one church. You go and just massacre people during mass. You have an acting president. The level of agitation that even suggests a, you know, a, a, a very difficult volcanic situation that can easily explode is on our hand. If, the acting, if all of these things were managed well, and if the acting president had... I carry the air in a manner that maybe Buhari didn't even matter to us. Then why would we be talking about him? But if it still matters to us, not just Shegun, not the PDP, Nigerians, if the man matters to us as it seemed to matter to us, it is our right to ask for him. It is our right to want to know. It is our right to be agitated. It is our right to protest. It is our right to be listened to. It is our right to see them make steps that suggests that they are listening to us. They are, not, is, they are not running government for themselves. What is our responsibility when we have all of this right? What is the responsibility we have? Oh, that's why we're talking. Okay, so uh, our responsibility is to throw up the issues that we're hearing from Nigerians and we also believe strongly in. Our responsibility is to demonstrate clearly that you better come back to your beautiful party, the PDP, because they seem to have a general understanding of how Nigeria ought to be and how Nigeria ought to be run. Well, I definitely trust you to sneak that one in as your convention comes this Oh, morning. yes. Well, thank you so much for coming, Mr. Shegmo Shawumi, uh, on Sunrise Daily this morning. He is a member of the People's Democratic Party. Sunrise Daily will continue in just a moment. Please stay with us.